قدرتك وجلالك وبهائك وسلطانك Alhamdulillah <laughs> Wala bakar sahabat tabi'in Ridwan Allah Ta'ala alaihi majma'in Ya ayuhal mu'minul khazirun Itaka Allah Ta'ala Ita'ina Allah ma'alladina Walladina hu muhsinun Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Salatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya Min mursalin Sayyidina maulana muhammadin Wala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Hazrat Abu Bakar Siddiq Radiyallahu anhi saying in his khutbah All praises are due to Allah the Lord of the creatures. I praise him and seek his help and we ask him for generosity for what is after death because my time and yours has almost finished. And I witness that there is no ilah but Allah alone, no partner with him and that Muhammad wasalam, is his servant and messenger whom he sent with the truth as a bringer of good news and a warner and an illuminating lamp so that he might warn whoever is alive and that the word would be made clear on the disbelievers. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger is truly guided and whoever disobeys them has gone astray into clear error. I advise you to have taqwa of Allah and to hold on strongly to the command of Allah which he has laid down for you and by which he has guided you. The summary of the guidance of Islam after the shahadat is we hear and we obey to whomever Allah has given authority over you because whoever obeys Allah and obeys those who enjoin the good and forbid the evil has succeeded and prospered and completed the job he has been given. As recorded by Imam Suyuti. Ya Allah, 
bless and grant peace and blessings to the spirit of our master Muhammad والسلام, among the spirits and to his bodies among the bodies and to his tomb among the tombs and to his maqam among the maqams and to his witnessing in witnessings and to his remembrance when he is remembered a prayer from us to our prophet ya allah send the greeting to him from us when the greeting of peace is mentioned peace be upon the prophet and the mercy of allah and his blessings peace be upon you o messenger of allah peace be upon you o beloved of allah peace be upon you o our master muhammad ibn abdullah peace be upon you and your pure good family peace be upon you and your wives the mothers of the believers peace be upon you and all your companions peace be upon us and on the righteous slaves of Allah. May peace and blessings also be upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, O believers, welcome to you as we have been given the honor of gathering for the first Juma of the holy month of Shaban, the month of Rasulullah. O believers, it is the month between Rajab and Ramazan. It is one of the most special months in the eyes of Sayyidina Muhammad Hazrat Aisha radiallahu an said the dearest of months to Rasulullah wasalam, was Sha'ban, which he would connect to Ramazan. The Holy Prophet wasalam, warned us not to be in Ghaflat in this month. Hazrat Usama ibn Zaid radiallahu an asked the Holy Prophet والسلام, why he fasted so much during Shaban. And the Holy Prophet والسلام, said, It is a month people are in ghaflat about between the months of Rajab and Ramazan. It is a month in which the deeds are raised to the Lord of the worlds, and I like for my deeds to be raised when I am fasting. Ghawsul Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Gilani Qadassallahu Sir explaining how holy this month of Shaban is. Saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected four out of each category of things. And then he has chosen one out of those four. From the angels, he selected Jibrail, Mikhail, Israfil and Azrael alayhi salam. And he chose Hazrat Jibrail from these four. From the prophets, the four he selected were Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And from them he chose Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. The four from the Sahaba were Hazrat Abu Bakr, Umar, Usman, and Ali. And from them he chose Hazrat Abu Bakr. From the masjids, he chose the Masjid al-Haram by the Kaaba, Masjid al-Aqsa, Masjid al-Nabawi, and the Masjid of the Tur al-Sin, of the Mount Sin, Sinai. From these, he chose Masjid al-Haram. From the days, he chose Yam al-Fitr, Yam al-Adha, Yam al-Arafa, and Yam al-Ashura. And from these, he chose Yamul Arafa. From the four nights, he chose Laylatul Barat, Laylatul Qadir, Laylatul Juma, and Laylatul Eid. From these, he chose Laylatul Qadir. From the places, he chose Mecca, Medina, Quds, and Masajid al Shair. From these, he chose Mecca. From the mountains, he chose Uhud, Sinai. Likam and Lubnan, from these he chose Sinai. From the rivers, it was Jaihun, Saihun, the Euphrates, and the Nile. From them he chose the Euphrates. And from the months, he chose Rajab, Shaban, Ramazan, and Muharram. From them, he selected Shaban and made it the Prophet Salam's own month. So just as the Holy Prophet is the most excellent of prophets, his month is the most excellent of months. No believers, we should be awake 
and aware in this month. The believer must be awake and he must be careful. The believer must take care to protect his faith because we have enemies that are constantly trying to make us to go off from the Sirat al-Mustaqim. The enemies that are inside of us and the enemies that are outside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran in Surat al-Fatir, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Verily, shaitan is an enemy for you. So treat him like an enemy. He only invites his followers to be among the companions of the flaming fire. Zadakallah al-Azim. The Holy Prophet is saying in a hadith is sharif Your worst enemy is your nafs which is inside of you. Imam al-Ghazali, Qadazullah Sir, is describing how a believer must protect himself against these enemies, saying, know that the body is like a city, and the intellect of the mature human being is like a king ruling that city. All the forces of the outward and inward senses that he can use, they are like his soldiers and his helpers. The evil ego is like an enemy that challenges him in his kingdom and wants to destroy his people. The body then is like a castle and the spirit like his guardian taking care of it. If he fights against his enemies and he defeats them and he rules them to do what he likes, he will be praised when he returns to Allah's presence because Allah has said about them in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Allah has given those who struggle with their wealth and lives a level above those who sit at home. So this is the real struggle. This is why the Holy Prophet has called it the greater jihad. And this is why he has said the mujahid, the fighter against unbelief, is he who fights against his ego in obeying Allah. If we are understanding the battle that is going on inside of us, if we are understanding this greater jihad, then we cannot be in ghaflat. Because ghaflat, in this battle, it is not a physical death. It is worse than that. It is a death of the heart, a death of the spirit. And that kind of death, it has the worst ending. Our Shaykh, Sahib al-Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al kabrisi al-Rabbani, is teaching us, saying, you got sick, you're going to get the recipe to get cured. Otherwise, you're going to die. Dying in the spirit is not like dying in the world. If your spirit is dead, then you have lost, you have perished, you're going to be swept away, never coming back to existence again. Even shaitan doesn't want that. Shaitan is saying, I would rather stay in the hellfire forever. Don't send me to non-existence. Once you gave me a body, Ya Rabbi, and once you made me appear, don't put me to disappearing stations. That is the reality of what is in front of us. So we must wake up and we must prepare ourselves to fight against these enemies. This is the test of this life. Sahib al-Sayyib is explaining to us the nature of this life and how we must fight to our ego saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is in control. He has the control of this world and everything is in His hands. He is saying to us, I will let your rope a little bit loose, run around, but your rope is in my hand. When I pull, you are going to come. Run as you like, if you think you are going to run. But this world is so small. In the end, you are going out from one door, you entered through one door, and you are going out from another door. You entered clean. You are clean up to the maturity age. After the maturity age, you are dirtying yourself with your dirty mind, with your dirty thinking. And turn around and ask forgiveness and clean yourself again in this journey. While you entered through that door, you are continuing that journey. You are going to go out from the other door. Two doors are waiting for you. Either you go out from the right side, which is salamat, safety, or you go out from the left door. The troubles, it begins that time. 
If anybody is saying, I am exceptioned from this, that one should not be human. Maybe it's an angel, or maybe it's lower than the animals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, because Allah is putting ego and saying to us, your ego is your worst enemy. And the Holy Prophet is saying this to us, you cannot take care of your ego by yourself. You need a master. You need somebody to fix it for you, to show you what is right and what is wrong. If you don't, then your guide is going to be shaitan. Shaitan is going to lead you. And you are still going to think that you are in the Sirat al Mustaqim, but you are already going to be in the wrong road. With this life, it is a journey that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us on. He has said in the Holy Quran, Bismillah rahman rahim Glory to He in whose hand is the kingdom, and He has power over all things. He created death and life to test you. Which one of you is best in deeds? And he is the exalted in might, the forgiving. Sadaqallah Nazim. This journey, this test, it can only be passed if you are holding on to the sunnah of the Rasulullah wasalam. If you are holding on to an inheritor of the Prophet As Malana Jalal Zin Rumi Qadazullah Sir said, whoever travels without a guide needs 200 years for a two-day journey. And our Grand Shaykh Sultan Al-Awliya, Shaykh Malana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani is saying, be with your Shaykh and you will lose neither power, knowledge, wisdom, patience, nor your life, because everything is with him. You are never alone, not even in deserts or on seas, even if you were the only human being on earth. Those are the people about whom the Prophet ﷺ says, when you look to them, you look to Allah. If you are with your shaykh, with your guide, shaitan will never conquer your heart. He cannot enter because your shaykh is there with you. Oh believers, this is sohbat, this is companionship. This is companionship and sohbat with the friends of Allah, leading us to the sohbat of the Rasulullah wasalam. They will bring us to the taqwa of Allah. It is the only cure for the pain of this life. If we submit ourselves to the friends of Allah, if we fight against our ego and shaitan, if we run to hear and obey, then we will be Amongst those whom Allah loves. Allah is saying in Surah Al-Nisa, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, they are with those to whom Allah has shown His favor. From the prophets, the saints, the martyrs, and the righteous. And what good companions are they? Sadaqallah al-Azim. Inshallah rahman we must run to be in that companionship in that association, in that sohbat, by ourselves. We may not be able to do it, but with them, quickly we may reach to safety. As Shaykh Effendi is saying, if we are holding tightly to the Holy Ones, if we are holding tightly to the guides that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us for this time, for this ahir zaman, if we don't put doubt in our hearts about them, then there is no way that shaitan can fool us. Our service may be very weak. Maybe we do broken salat, broken fasting, and everything is broken. Maybe none of them is fit for the Divine Presence, yes. But because we are holding tightly to the Holy Ones, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order His angels, take this one's weak service and throw it into the oceans of those Holy Ones. I am accepting it with that ocean. Inshallah Rahman. Ya Rabbi, in this holy month of your beloved Habib wasalam, we are asking to stay in the companionship of those who are beloved to you. We are asking you to keep us with them in this life and to raise us with them in the next life to be in their companionship. We are asking your protection from our ego, from our desires, from shaitan and from this dunya. We are asking for your pleasure and your acceptance. Amen. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah.